Why did the chicken cross the road? Why did the chicken cross the road? Why did the chicken cross the road? It's a question people have been asking for almost 200 years. And in Key West, chickens don't just cross the road. They hold up traffic and put everyone on chicken time. These aren't your KFC tenders. These are tough, muscled mother cluckers with big cock energy. And now it's their island. Humans are just living on it. Welcome to Key West, the southernmost point in the U.S., famous for its pristine beaches, its pastel houses, and as the place where Ernest Hemingway kicked up his heels. Yes, it's been swallowed by the sea, but that's easy to forget after a few rum runners. But some locals know it for its pests, the legendary, fat, feral chickens. Feral chickens are literally everywhere, and there's no way of counting how many there are because they're nomads. They're always crossing the road, loitering on street corners, wandering into local bars, destroying property, and waking people up at all hours with a cocky crow. (coughs) Plus, there's the poop. It's all over the place. It isn't just unsightly. It helps spread disease. The poop is, excuse the pun, that's a real foul subject. Lopez sits on the county council, which passed a tough new law to control the chickens. I like chickens. (laughs) I just think that we have too many, bottom line. Only the new law doesn't limit the rights of chickens. It punishes the people who love them. We've got some citizens that buy feed, and I'm talking literally 50-pound bags of corn mash. We've got one, well, a couple of people that drive around on a tricycle and dress up as a chick and they feed the chickens. The county has made it illegal to feed the chickens. Violators can face a $250 fine, plus a $500 fine every time they repeat the offense. They're trying to stop the human enablers from creating an endless cycle of dependency. If we're feeding them, then they're not gonna forage. They're gonna look to us. Some people walk out of their homes, and because we've created that atmosphere for them, They go running up to any human being because they think that that's a source of food. Not only do tourists love them, but some locals have developed a weird pride in the chickens. They've become a kind of mascot of quirky Key West. There's even a Key West chicken channel where you can watch them clucking and aimlessly pecking around, living that sweet, sweet Key West dream. And these chickens have been Key Westers for generations. They arrived in the 1800s, shipped over by people from the Caribbean islands, who wanted to sacrifice them as a food source and use them as a source for, well, not food. But when cockfighting was banned in 1986, the chickens were freed, and it didn't take long for them to get busy. The population exploded. And remember, Key West is only a two by four mile island with no major chicken predators. These wild chickens were able to develop habits similar to their wild ancestor, the red jungle fowl, like flying into trees and forming rooster-led social clans. Back in the old days, you would find maybe a few feral chickens periodically. Now we see those large groups. Can you imagine a group of chickens crossing US-1? That's a four lane highway. Okay, and then and cars stopping to avoid that. It happens. It happens here in Key West. It turns out chickens aren't great at crossing roads or navigating the human world in general. The island's chicken rescue, Key West Wildlife Center, says it's called to save around 1,500 chickens every year. That's about five a day. If I were to say that it were manageable, that would not be true. But we are managing. Back in 2004, the county tried to manage more aggressively. They hired a local barber to catch chickens and bring them to a sanctuary off the island. But Armando Para's hunting trips didn't go over well with half the island that adores these roaming cocks. So not long after he started, Para gave up on his gig. We no longer have our chicken catcher contracted, but we've got some really good guys that are part of our community services team that grew up with chickens themselves. And so they know how to catch them humanely. Still, some rogue residents have tried shooting their shots, which is a serious crime. 
Others trap them. The trap chickens head to chicken retirement, which is really just a farm in mainland Florida. The most humane thing, I believe, is the compromise that we've reached. We catch them. We send them where they where they can do the most good. Mainland Florida is known for embracing its retirees, but it may not be able to handle the waves and waves of chickens heading its way. I think that's going to happen eventually with the farms where they periodically get overrun until they can find a way to, to, to transport the, the animals. Admittedly, I'm a bit concerned about that. But the program has so far managed to keep both the chicken lovers and haters happy. Allegedly, no chickens have been sacrificed, and those rescued or trapped have gone on to bigger things, like this 1,200-acre chicken paradise near Lake Okeechobee, where they're used as a form of bug control. Now look what happens when you don't choose chicken death. A happy ending. I want them to have a pension plan, you know? <laughs>